let's talk more about these Netflix numbers that just came out. Joining us now, Mark Mahaney from Evercore ISI. Mark, I know Netflix has been a favorite of yours. These subscriber numbers are interesting, but so are the cost controls and Netflix calling out, we're not getting into this consolidation game. That's not where we're spending our money. Uh, investors like to hear that. Investors like to hear that this was the strongest fourth quarter they've ever printed in terms of net ads, 13 million. I think the highest they ever had before was somewhere between 9 and 10 million. So I know there's a lot of one-timers that are going in here or um, one year or one year and a half or if you will. And that's the paid sharing crackdown. But I think what the market is sort of underappreciated is just how much they've expanded their TAM total adjustable market by bringing down that price point. It was the number one issue that consumers had, subscribers had, ex-subscribers had with Netflix based on our survey work, that price point. And they brought it down by 30% a year and a half ago, and then they've been, or a year ago, and then they've been rolling out awareness has been building. They do a price increase at the high end. They now have a safety net at the bottom end with a lower price. I just think it's worked out really well for them. But it looks like they've been relatively conservative with guidance for a couple of quarters. That's my guess as to what they're doing with the March quarter. And then they're telling you they're doing $6 billion in free cash flow this year. You want somebody who's generating free cash flow from streaming? It's Netflix. And it's going to rise materially in 25 too. So all of a sudden, on a free cash flow story, this thing actually is starting to look pretty darn attractive. So we continue to like Netflix. These are good results. Yeah, and of course, that, that perhaps speaks in parts why they're throwing cold water on the notion of, of acquiring linear uh, assets in the current media M&A speculative landscape that we're talking about. I am curious, though, about what about how acquisitive this company could be or not be when it comes to something like, for example, games, which everybody has expected and anticipated a big ramp up of and we haven't really seen. Uh, I, I think they view games and we all should view games as just kind of another content vertical for uh, for Netflix. That, that's how I think about it, Morgan. It's you want to spend 500 million on raw or do you want to spend 500 million on developing games? It's all content. It's all about hours. It's all about engagement. And so, yeah, just treat it like, I don't know, whatever, anime or, uh, you know, old westerns or raw or, um, or, or games. So I think you'll see them sprinkle a little bit more here or there. And this company, the, the algorithms that they use to figure out how much content is worth, it's all about well, what drives hours. Hmm. They find something that drives hours. My guess is that $10 billion was probably a good price for Netflix, given the, you know, the, the, the very strong, broad interest in, in WWE Mark? that uh, – that, that's going to help. So I, I think you'll see more gaming and more of those kind of deals. Well, let me see if I can get you out on a limb here a little bit. As yeah. I look at these numbers and what's happening in the rest of the content industry, is round one of the streaming wars over? And did Netflix essentially win, right? They're profitable. They're still the biggest. Others are cutting back and looking for ways to bulk up, but doesn't look like necessarily from a, from a position of strength. John, you and I have looked at the space for a long time. I think we're around 10. Uh, it, it, you know, we've had so many competitive entrants come in and out and going back to blockbuster days and pre that's pre-streaming. So, uh, I think you had peak streaming competitive intensity back in 2021 and then when that 2021-22, but when that Disney CEO got fired for streaming losses, you know, that was the peak. And then ever since then, you've had people cut back their spend on content, cut back their spend on marketing and start licensing to Netflix, that's why Band of Brothers is on Netflix. That's why Suits is on Netflix and other shows are going to be on there. I mean, Netflix is now moving away from the path and they're doing it with more and more free cash flow. This was Reed Hastings' game plan from the beginning. It's it's whoever gets to the top, whoever has the most subs, generates the most revenue, gets the revenue with which to, to generate more content, more content begins more subs, it's a flywheel. And they're there now, and competition is fading, and free cash flow is rising. This is what you want as an investor in Netflix. Okay.